Hello, my name's Jim, and even though I haven't owned the FX uh, Home Composite Lab program uh, for very long, I did want to show you what I've been able to put together uh, just by viewing the videos that are available on their homepage, and uh, also the uh, going to the forum and uh, reading the questions and answers that are uh, available. <coughs> what I have here is uh, two programs. I've selected a background that has a very strong color tint and what I'm wanting to do is to composite on top of that a, uh, a rather pasty looking individual. Uh, I want to extract him uh, from the background and put it in. <coughs> Not only uh, put it on this background but uh, also try to make it look as if it belongs there uh, even though he's sitting in a chair. Uh, so uh, to begin with the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, go to uh, a color key. Uh, I'm going to enhance the saturation and that'll bring the green out a little bit more, make it easier for, uh, to uh, pull it out of the background. Uh, go to the key and uh, I, I like to use the uh, color difference key. It uh, works for me with the backgrounds that I use. <coughs> Reduce the white until I get all the green out and then uh, what you have to watch is that as you scrub through it you may find that you have uh, places where it bleeds through uh, that they're close enough to the green that you're going to see the background through it so I'll bring the black up just a little bit and what you notice happens then is that the uh, you get a little bit of a halo you get this uh, jagged green color that surrounds the uh, the foreground individual there are a few th tricks you can do to get rid of that. Um, let me pull it in a little bit closer where you can see what I'm talking about. There, you see the, uh, the jagged green edges. Now, like I said, there's a couple of things you can do. Uh, one, uh, go to media and look at the properties of the clip. And uh, if you look down there the, uh, at the UV, you'll see that it's horizontal. If you change that, uh, let's see, uh, go with the uh, Gaussian to begin with and reduce it to about two. And then you notice the difference in the edge. See, it pops back a little bit. So it, it reduces it just, just on that. And you can play around with that. Uh, you can go to, uh, uh, change it to, um, let's say, box. Uh, and uh, actually, that added a little bit to it, but you can see whatever works best for the situation you're in, the camera you're using, and the, the uh, quality of the video you're bringing in. Uh, I'm going to set this back on Gaussian and reduce it to about a 1. And that uh, that's not bad. It's uh, that there's some other things you can do. One is go to grade. And you use spill suppression. What that will do is that, as you can see, it takes all the green out. It uh, Any green that's spilled over, it, it removes it. And you still have a, a fairly ragged edge, so we're going to go back and take care of that part. But in the composition, the, uh, the green itself will not be spilling into the, uh, the foreground subject. So we go to grade again, or, uh, key again, and uh, we're going to erode, use the key erode white. And what that will do is actually sh uh, shrink the boundaries of the picture. So it will take away some of that jaggedness, but there you, again you've still got that harsh line. Uh, showing that it has been looking as it, almost as if it's cut out. Uh, so to get rid of that, we'll do a Gaussian blur. Uh, it comes in at 10, but I think about a 3 or so, somewhere in there. Yeah, that makes it look a little softer. We go to Composite, and you can see it starts to look more like it, it belongs there. It's, uh, it's not just pasted on top. Well, now the uh, next thing we want to do is uh, use a garbage mat. We want to get rid of this uh, extraneous background uh, picture and I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on that I'm just going to remove it there's a lot of good uh, tutorials and uh, things out there that tell you how to do these sorts of things actually there's probably some better to uh, to uh, that you can look at on green screening even uh, it's just the method I use um, and there there's no right or wrong it's just uh, whatever works for you whatever gets you the best results.
what you need to use. Okay, so as the background disappears and we go to composite to look at everything, well, that's great, except it looks like I cut out a picture and pasted it on a sort of a greenish looking background, and we want to do away with that effect. So, what we're going to have to do is some grading. Um, the first thing I want to do is I want to uh, I want to get the contrast right, and the best way for me to do that is I uh, will reduce everything to black and white. And the way I do that is by desaturating. So I'll go here and desaturate everything. Then I'll call up the foreground subject and go to the grading on it. And uh, by using the uh, Contrast Pro, I can. Uh, bring up the blacks and what I'm trying to do is match the uh, the blacks in the in the foreground with the blacks in the where the blacks in the blacks in the background they try to get them to look like they're uh, all lit by the same source uh, initial lighting is important but you know this this helps too and so I'll bring up the black a little bit and okay that's and it's starting to look about where it needs to be, but it's also taking the highlights out. So what I'll have to do next is to bring down the white to bring the highlights back in. And uh, that's 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 not perfect the, uh, because of the focus difference, but uh, that's that's a big difference compared with what it was. And so I'm gonna I'm gonna go with that for now. So I'll get rid of the, uh, the black and white. Now we have a color picture, but still, there's a there's still a color difference. So the first thing I want to do is desaturate it a little bit because the, the looks like the background is a little more washed out than what the foreground is. So I'm going to go to saturation, and I'm going to tune it down just a little bit, make something just a little not as harsh. Take some of the reds out. Yeah, right. Now, it's still not where I want it, so the next uh, feature that I'm going to use in grading is, uh, is a, something called ambient light, and it is a fantastic tool. Uh, I don't know why I, I didn't read more about it. What I'm going to do is take the little eyedropper, and I'm going to look for a place in the background that I consider rep is representative of the overall color of the background, and use that. Now as I bring that up a little bit, and uh, within reason, I uh, the foreground subject begins to look like it's picking up uh, reflected light from the background. And uh, you see before and after, yeah, there's a, there's a difference. So it, it looks again more and more like it belongs there. And that's, um, that's one good place if you want to leave it there, if that's what you're looking for, or you know, it's just a short scene you're passing through. The other feature you can do is uh, you can go in and uh, grade the entire project. And uh, to do that, there's many ways you can. Uh, uh, what I'm going to do, though, is I'm just going to go with one of these uh, presets that comes with the program. There's one of those, there's a nice little preview box where you can see what it looks like. There's uh, one I've seen on here that looks like it might go well, and it's a uh, road to perdition. Uh, might go well with this particular subject. I'll apply that, and now it looks more so than when I started that, uh, that the subject belongs in there. And uh, the, of course I wouldn't have to stay with the, uh, what's in this preset, I could go in and adjust that or even create my own preset, that's the nice thing about this program. Anyway, that's my tutorial, and I thank you for watching, I hope it helped.